Welcome to 52 Miniatures, my name is Alex. In this video I'm going to stress test a painting guide that I created on painting green skins and hobgrots for beginners in about an hour. And I'll be testing it on someone who has never painted a miniature before. What better way to stress test a painting guide, right? Colourful Kraken Studio reached out to me sometime last year and asked if I wanted to create a step-by-step -step miniature painting guide for their Miniature Painting Made Easy, a book collection containing step-by-step -step guides on how to paint miniatures. With some great painters, um, and me. I must be in there for my good looks and uh, pleasant smell, as long as you keep your distance and take your glasses off. Anyway step-by-step -step guides in a series of three books, starting from sort of I've never painted a mini before to some more experimental and fun techniques made by an array of skilled and famous painters. The nostalgic me remembers the White Dwarf magazines and Warhammer faction book step-by-step -step guides. Buy the paint, put it on the mini in this specific order and voila, your minis look like the one on the box, only they never did. Mine always reminded me more of a multicoloured melting candle than that pretty dwarf on the box. Since then, I've kind of strayed from step-by-step -step guides as I prefer my painting not so bound by rules and now do this and now do that. As a matter of fact, I talked to my friend Dave about this recently. But painting a miniature is, is like... Um, there's not that many rules in my head, but with miniature war games, there's a lot of rules. Yes. Yeah. It's like to play the game, you need to buy the rule book. <laughs> it's not like if you paint miniatures, you need to buy the rule book of how to paint the miniatures. If there was one, would it exist? And everyone would buy it. When you want a really clear introduction to painting, or, well, how do I paint OSL, or some other specific technique, there's something calming and methodical about having step-by-step -step images and not the slight shaky hand and flashy YouTube editing. So I accepted this request for a painting guide and I took it rather seriously. No required skill level, simple paint application techniques and an efficient workflow. 90 minutes was the max time frame set by Colourful Kraken. I narrowed it down to one hour. Two versions of Orc, Goblin or Hobgrot skin, using pretty much the same paint, just in different places. Great for horde painting with variety. Sounds like an exotic disease. I got bitten by a lizard in the Amazonian Delta and got horde painting with variety. But the only true way to test that my step-by-step -step guide actually is what it claims to be would be to not use it myself. One hour for an experienced painter is a lot more than an hour for someone new to the hobby. Simple techniques sounds fine, but simple techniques in the hands of a great painter look great, not the least bit like melted candle wax. And so, meet Signe. Hi. She's gonna paint her very first miniature, a Hobgrotz litter from Games Workshop. Great miniatures, no excess in tiny detail, lovely character, a pretty decent place to start painting miniatures. While Signa paints her mini as a green skin, I will in parallel show images of the same steps, images I shot for the miniature painting Made Easy book, but mine are painted to a more classic Hobgrot scheme. The first step is a brown primer. Well, the first step was actually a texture paste on the base to get a little action going down there, and then a brown primer. I primed Signa's mini for her as well, as I like to let Rattlecam Primer cure for quite some time. No point in introducing someone to painting minis by making them watch paint dry. So her first step was a Zenithal Prime with a pale yellow on top of a brown base coat. Zenithal Priming is when a brighter spray of paint is applied from above the miniature on top of a darker base coat. Most common is a white spray over a black, but in this case, we're doing the major work on the slitter's skin, brown shadows and tan highlights on all the surfaces of the miniature facing upwards. This step needs to be done rather delicately as we still want a lot of that brown. The next step is the most tedious of all steps. Admittedly, for a beginner, rather great for learning a bit of brush control. 
paint everything that I want metallic with the black. Maybe this is the deal breaker. If you're still enjoying yourself after this step, then most probably, in a few years, you'll have a dedicated hobby basement with enough paint to supply 10 lifetimes of miniature painting, and yet, your airbrush is clogged and no one seems to have cleaned your brushes properly. Also, where did that cat come from? Adding something a little cheeky, perhaps, to the guide, hopefully inspiring new painters to try to mix paint. For a warmer metallic, uh, a little rusty looking, I mixed orange and steel. Overbrushing the black with this mixture on a flat brush. So lightly brushing over the raised areas, trying to leave quite a lot of black in the recesses. Yet not dry brushing, the brush is wet. And yeah, metallic paints can be mixed with regular paints to achieve different tints. The shine and metallic reflection will be reduced, an effect I like. After that, a light dry brush with a silver paint on the edges of the metallic bits. And then some last blocks of colour. A warm grey on all the ropes, some yellow on the nails and teeth, and an orange dot in the eye. Totally optional, by the way. Signa was now getting bored, or needed to stretch her legs or something. I think she's waiting for you to click the like button, actually. Thanks. Now. Time to move on to something completely different. Oil paints. What? I thought this was supposed to be a simple beginner's guide type thing. Exactly. Not enough people in the hobby get introduced to oil paints as a viable option at an early stage. It used to be the only way is layer, wash, layer, highlight. Now it's just put the contrast paint on it. Sorry, rant. But oil paints are in fact an option Regardless of skill level, power to the oil paint. We're making three oil washes. One reddish, one bluish, and one blackish. The consistency can be rather thick for this, like cream, not the whipped kind. All the previous steps have been a foundation for these oil washes. An oil wash is created by mixing oil paint and odorless thinner or white spirit. The oil wash does not interfere so much with the acrylic layers already in place, and is an easy way to create depth in the recesses while preserving the highlights. Oil paint and oil wash takes longer to dry than acrylics, a lot longer. But that also means it has a pleasantly prolonged working time. The Eptiling oil paints cure slightly faster than regular oil paints, and that is why I have them lined up. Odorless white spirit does not smell, but it's still white spirit. So make sure you have some good ventilation going. And if doing this regularly, like me, a respirator is a fine thing. And read up on what white spirit is and where not to put it. Red wash, one part magenta, one part bitumen, and approximately seven-ish parts of odorless thinner. Blue wash, two parts intense blue to one part bitumen, and odorless thinner as previously. Black wash, one part bitumen and one part black, with odorless, thinner. And this is where mine and Cygnus miniatures will take two different paths, and my way to sneak in colour options as well as a bit of colour theory into the step-by-step -step guide. I cover all the skin with the red wash and all the rope and twine with the black wash. The blue wash I use a little more carefully covering maybe only half of the metallic parts, wherever it looks cool. Another hobgrot, I know, but the more the merrier. I then lightly dampen a cotton bud in odorless white spirit or thinner and carefully wipe away the oil paint on raised areas and areas facing upwards. The ability to erase like this is one of the major things with oil paints. The result is a slightly overall staining with some lovely depth coloured shadows, together with the zenithal, a great hobgrot skin tone. The oil wash also covers all crevices, hiding any imperfections or missed spots. What I asked Singna was to try to use the blue wash on the skin instead of the red wash, because yellow and blue makes green. Aha, I'm trying to subliminally teach you some dreaded colour theory. But what you get in the end is a great sort of faded orc or goblin green with some cool blue shadows. Yet all the steps are the same. This is not only a great, simple and efficient green skin technique, but a great way to get variety in a horde of miniatures. You'll see at the end of the video that I painted a mixed warband of hobgrot slitters. Yellow, brown, red and blue-green. 
While the oil paints are out as a colourful fantasy option, one can add a little straight unmixed blue and magenta and tone the armour excessively in some places, just because it looks cool. As well as a thin wash made from only the bitumen oil paint and quite a lot of white spirit on the base. Once this has all settled, dust on some pigment powder you like the look of. I chose green because it would complement the warm brown red hobgrot slitters. If I would have only painted green skins, I would probably have gone for a red earth type pigment instead to complement the green. And that's pretty much it. Time's up. An hour of brush time has passed. As a little extra in the book, I showed how a light rust oil paint could be a nice addition as well as painting the rim of the base, of course, once the oil paints were dry the next day. And finally, I sprayed on a matte varnish to protect the minis on the table. Now let's have a look at Signa's miniature next to one of my miniatures. Pretty rad for a first miniature, right? I was glad to see that my recipe indeed seemed to work for someone new to the hobby. Signa painted a great mini and I hope she'll be back for more. If you're watching this video as it's released, please check out the Kickstarter for the Miniature Painting Made Easy books by a Colourful Kraken Studio. This video is not sponsored by them, I just wanted to show off my recipe. If you do back the Kickstarter through my referral link down in the description though, I believe I'll be getting a little bit of a kickback. There's so many great painters involved in this project with so many great tips and the books are well worth checking out if you're into step-by-step -step guides in proper printed format. If you don't like the books, but still think I look good and smell nice from a distance, please don't hesitate to check out my Patreon where you can support my work with the creation of videos like this one. A great thank you to Signe for joining in on this video. If you'd like her back in another video, let me know in the comments and I can use your kind words as leverage. Oh, and I also want to pay her half of what I make from this video on YouTube, so make sure you press like and spread the words to your friends. It really makes a difference. A dear thank you to my patrons, and thanks to you for watching. Bye.